I'm Joe Agustinelli, Social Media Manager at Greenway Health, and this is another episode of our podcast, Putting Possibility into Practice. And on this episode of our podcast, I am joined by Allie Clements. She is an Associate Claims Analyst who recently joined the team here at Greenway Health. And the reason we're welcoming Allie to the show is for the first time, at least in recent memory, um, and a lot of our longer time employees have also said this is the first time ever that we've had a team member with a service dog. And as Greenway strives to be more uh, diverse and inclusion, uh, not only in its team members, but in everything that we do in community outreach, we thought it would be great to uh, talk to Allie about her service dog, what exactly the dog does, and and raise awareness for the conditions that the dog picks up. Where'd you go to college? Where are you from? Are you originally from this area? And uh, what brought you to Greenway Health? So I'm a UT grad, um, a really recent UT grad. I graduated in May. Um, I grew up in Atlanta um, when I was 18, moved to New York City, decided it was too cold, immediately moved to Florida. Um, and I've been here ever since that was 2015. So um, I've been here for three years now. So. How long did you spend in New York City? I'm originally from upstate New York. That's the only reason I asked. I spent nine months there. All right. And that I was so there for a school year. So. Which included the winter. So that's yes. why you came down to Florida. Okay. I understand. Whereabouts in New York City? I was like 55th and 3rd. So oh, okay. right Midtown East, right about um, awesome. the Upper East. So. Nice. What brought you to Greenway? So I was poking around, applying for jobs and found Greenway. And I had had a friend who was previously employed by Greenway who highly recommended um, Greenway as a company and um, particularly the department of GRS Um, and once I applied it was a very easy seamless process after that and I've been here for a week and a half and um, definitely a great great fit so and if you can hear some background noise on the podcast, that's actually her service dog, uh, Ollie. So it is. It's Allie and Ollie. Allie and Ollie. Yep. Yeah. So it's her service dog uh, in the background. Talk to us a little bit about Ollie. I mean, as I mentioned, a lot of team members for the first time, there's a dog here, and they're not they're not used yep. to it. But there's a there's a very good reason why Ollie is here. So talk a little bit about Ollie, how you got him, and how long have you had him? So I adopted Ollie from a shelter actually um, in June of 2017 um, with the intention of training him to be a service dog. And that's a really rare um, story because they usually, when they train service dogs, they get them from breeders um, just because you can trace the dog's history and that kind of stuff. But um, essentially we found Ollie and he was a perfect fit for um, what he does. Um, And I was told that right up front at the shelter, I got very, very lucky. Um, So it turned into a, I save you, you save me situation. Um, A rescue dog to super dog. Um, I've heard a lot of different um, comparisons, I guess. Um, But so it's a very rare story for a rescue dog to become a service dog, but it does happen and um, he, was sent off in about a month after I adopted him to essentially boot camp, which was an eight month program out of Hollywood, Florida, which is over by Miami. Um, And Ollie was training alongside 15 other dogs um, in a, uh, it's a site called Creating New Tales. Um, And they trained him up, he was, One of the most polite dogs in his class, his trainer said, and he's one of the best gluten dogs she's ever had. So um, she loved him, even though he was a really rare um, situation, because usually they don't they don't prefer rescues to be service dogs. But now you touched on it a little bit there in that response when you when when you you mentioned gluten, Mm -hmm. Um, but as we were explaining before the podcast started recording, there's two tasks that, that Ali mm-hmm. is, is assigned with and had to get uh, trained for. Yep. So what what are those tasks as to why he's here every day? So his two primary tasks are gluten detection and deep pressure therapy. Um, and I have a combination of celiac disease and Crohn's disease, um, which 
it's not an unheard of combination, but it can be a little bit sticky and dangerous because of the different diet requirements of the two. And um, the Crohn's is a potentially life-threatening condition. Um, and celiac is more of a long-term, um, you know, chronic up and down, uh, controlled by diet uh, condition. Um, and with celiac, which I was diagnosed first with celiac, um, you have to com you have to follow a completely gluten free diet, um, and the FDA allows up to twenty parts per million gluten in any given product. Um, to be considered gluten free. So even if a label says gluten free, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily to the level that's acceptable right. for your body. It still has trace amounts um, with some products, even uh, among products that are like very famously gluten free and uh, big gluten free empire products um, often will have you know trace amounts. Um, the FDA picked 20 parts per million because they say, you know, most celiacs can't detect that, but the key word there being most. I am very unbelievably sensitive. You know, if somebody uses a spatula on my food and um, had recently touched gluten, even if it was like two burgers ago, um, that's enough to make me sick. So. It's down to the products and the, the tiny particles of the products to cross-contamination to um, something we're dealing with at home right now is we have, a oh, we have a sponge that all my roommates use and I'm learning I can't use the same sponge as them because he's starting to alert to my dishes. So things like that where he, um, he's very upfront with alert me if there's gluten and um, all clear if I can eat it. Um, and so that's his primary task. His secondary task is the uh, depressure therapy, which can be for lots of different conditions, but I particularly use it for Crohn's. He can sense when I'm not feeling well, and he will put his, um, there's a heavy part of his chest right on the spot that's inflamed, um, and he'll use all of his weight to push it down and make it hurt less. Um, and it really does make a difference and like, you know, I can stand back up after he's able to, or he does that and feel better for a little while and it prolongs my day almost <laughs> before I do officially, you know, I'm down for the count. So those are his two primary tasks. Deep pressure therapy is really interesting because deep pressure therapy can be used for all kinds of psychiatric disorders because uh, there's a spot that's, it's on your sternum, like right below your chest area that if he if he uses the heavy part of his chest and co it's called cover um covers that area he can essentially lower your blood pressure and calm someone out of a panic attack or something along those lines so um those are his two primary tasks and primarily i use him for the gluten detection but he has been known to do the other stuff so and when you were talking about the gluten detection mm -hmm. you had mentioned that he gives you the sign, mm -hmm. okay, it's all clear or there's gluten. Right. How, when, when you say gives you a sign, how, yeah. how, how exactly does a dog give you a sign? So he does what's called a sit pretty for an alert. <laughs> a sit pretty is essentially when he sits on his back legs straight up in the air and puts his paws on my knees. And so that signal, signals to me that, no, probably shouldn't eat that. And then his all clear, he, he will either bow or lay down, kind of depending on how he feels. But he was trained to lay down, but more recently has gotten a little lazy and just wants to bow instead uh, for his all clear. So I translate both of them to all clear. We talked a little bit about the, the deep pressure therapy and how, how that works um, and the gluten detection. So those are his two primary tasks. And these are the reasons... You had talked about when you first got him, you were going to train him, but those are the reasons he had to go over to Miami. And my understanding is that having a dog trained for something like that mm -hmm. isn't easy to do location-wise, correct? Right. In terms of gluten detection, there are very, very few trainers that actually are trained to be able to... It's called odor training, o it O D O R and it all stands for something and I'm not hundred percent sure on what it actually stands for, but there are only 
like a few owner trainers in the entire world. So I'm really lucky that one happened to be here in Florida because I believe the next closest one is in Michigan. <laughs> so I was considered a local, even though I was you know four hours away, but you know comparatively to their other clients, which are all around the world, hmm. I was local because <laughs> at least I get to be in the same state. Mm-hmm. And it was really nice. Like when I did send them off for eight months, I could go visit. And um, anytime I was in Miami for X, Y, and Z, I was popping in and checking up on his training and um, looking at his living quarters. It was kind of like moving a kid to college because I, I literally set up his bed mm-hmm. <laughs> when I dropped him off. But um, yeah, the, the center is called Creating New Tales. It's in Hollywood. Um, it's a really wonderful place, and they do a lot of really cool work over there. So. You don't even know he's there. I mean, he stays so <laughs> calm, quiet for the most part. Maybe right. Maybe he was just very enriched by my presentation. But, um, all, all kidding aside, it has been very calm. And how has he adapted to the changes, you know, being in the office environment? Well, he did originally go to school with me. So, well, I, he graduated in March and my senior year ended in May. So he had two months of going to college with me and um so he was i essentially trained him how to behave with me Mm -hmm. then but they at the center have to make the dogs almost invisible to people he's more invisible when i've been sitting down a while i've you know he i've set up his space he knows where he's supposed to be and what he's supposed to be doing but he um goes into a down stay and stays for hours and hours and hours in the same spot uh he's been really shockingly amazing since we've gotten here like when we go through classes and everything he makes almost no noise um at all which is amazing to me (laughs) especially considering I, i met him as a puppy you know i saw the wild side of this you know little German short hair, and German short hairs are known for their energy level. So I saw the wild side, and suddenly he's adapted into this very polite, calm little dude when he's at work. And then the second work lets out at, you know, well, it's been 4.15 this week. I allow people to interact if they want to just because he loves people a lot. And um, you can kind of see his personality poke through when he's not forced into a downstay all day so he is a dog at his core even though he is working so well i'm glad here at greenway that we were able to find a home <laughs> for you and for yes. for ollie it's uh, it's it's great uh, having having him on board and um like i said great that we could find you guys at home here hope you guys enjoy your yes. hopefully long career here at oh, uh, yes. greenway health and as you continue to uh, grow and ollie grows perhaps we'll uh, get together again to talk a little yeah. bit more about uh uh, the service dog and exactly what Ali does and, and how he has adapted. Now, of course, I understand this is a podcast and you can't see uh, <laughs> the visuals, but we will get a picture of uh, Ali up uh, when we do publish uh, the podcast. And a reminder uh, that you can subscribe to our podcast across the social networks and, and the podcast uh, platform of your choice. In addition to uh, iTunes and Google Play, we are now available on TuneIn. Uh, and on the Stitcher app, uh, and we'll be adding more platforms here in the coming weeks. So I want to thank Allie Clements, Associate Claims Analyst, for taking time out of her day to discuss her service dog, Allie. <laughs> Allie and Allie have joined the team yep. here at, uh, at Greenway Health, and we thank them for taking time out of their day to join me on the podcast. I am Joe Agostinelli, Social Media Manager at Greenway Health, and this has been another edition of our podcast, Putting Possibility into Practice. Thanks for listening.